John Cogg, I'm the owner of Daniel Smith, and today we're in the artist studio with Linda Dahl. Linda is an artist from San Diego, California, as we call it, beautiful San Diego. Linda, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. Um, as a teacher, I love sharing with students, so this is a wonderful opportunity for me to allow people to see a little bit of what I do, why I do it. Um, not everyone's going to like what I do, but I like what I do, and that's all that matters. And I think that's one of my biggest suggestions for artists is to, especially beginner artists, is to figure out what you love. And what you love is what you're going to do best. I can remember Rex Brent years ago saying, if you start with what you're not good at, you'll always be running to catch up. If you start with what you're already good at, you'll always be ahead of everybody else leading the path. And I remember thinking, but I don't want to be the artist I am. And him saying, uh, excuse me, <laughs> that is who you are. And so what I do, I mean, I'd love to be a Barbara Nietzsche's and let this paint just flow. I'm not. I'm an engineer. I'm a type A personality. I need everything neat. I have some videos where you see me painting in a white robe. I never get paint on me. I don't get paint all over my studio. It's just who I am. I'm a neatnik. And so um, some people are going to say, why did she do that? And I'm just going to say, because I like to. Because I can is my answer to most things in painting, is I can and I enjoy it. My painting for me was never meant to be a job although I've had a profession and, and done well at painting, for me, it was always my relaxation and my pleasure. And I always wanted my painting to be about meditation time, relaxation time. And no matter whether I'm demonstrating in front of 500 people or I'm here with you and, and Shishu and I, I do the same thing no matter what. And I just always have fun and have a good time. And so I think artists need to make two lists, um, one of what they like to do and one of what they don't like to do. And then just put the what they don't like to do away and look at the list of what they like to do and then ask themselves, how can you combine the things you like to do into a painting? And so my technique is very different than everyone else's simply because I did that. Awesome. That's that. I love that. That's really good. And I'll show, I'm going to show you different sections of paintings. There's actually three people in me and three people paint my painting. One does the loose, free, wet into wet, have fun, don't think about anything. The other is the technician that does the drawing and this, or the draftsman. And then the other likes to finish it and likes the product. So there's literally three sections to my painting. And it's pretty mechanical, and that's okay for me. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. Awesome. That sounds fantastic, Linda. Can you show us um, maybe uh, your palette, the brushes, and, and certainly what paintings you've been doing as well? We're all related to uh -huh. on. I have uh, several palettes. I have a bigger palette down, down beside me, but this is the one I tend to use, and I tend to travel with a lot. Um, it's a Magello. Um, these are actually um, bead sorting trays that I glued into the top of the palette. This is usually one big tray. And when I travel, and I've traveled literally, I mean, Delta, I have over a million miles on Delta. So, you know, I've traveled the world many, many times. And I don't like to carry tubes. I don't want to be stopped by um, anybody and asked what they are. So I fill my palette before I go. I fill it about three or four days before I leave, and then I let everything dry. Um, I squirt the paint out, and then I take a stick, and I stir it until I get it fairly flat. And if I need to add more, with, but with Daniel Smith, I don't have to add too much. It does not shrink like many other pigments do. It sits up pretty well. Um, this is a one pour. I mean, that's pretty full for a one pour. So, but I did stir them. As I say, I stir and keep adding until I get them um, fairly flat. Uh, I start with my yellows. I go through my oranges, my reds, my blues, and my greens. And I do that because 
I really want to be able to pick up um, many colors at the same time. And so I will take my brush. I don't know. Can you see this, John? It's perfect. I will go across all four reds and then paint into my painting and let them mix on the page. I will go through all four blues. I will go through all four greens. I will go through all four yellows or oranges. And I love that I don't know what's gonna happen. I know a lot of artists make charts and know their colors and know exactly what happens when it mixes. I don't really care. When I'm doing a demo, I look at three people and I say, pick a color, pick a color, pick a color, and I paint the painting that color, regardless of whether it's a figure, whether it's landscape, color is kind of like candy for me. Frank Webb used to always say that uh, shape and value do the work, color gets the credit. Hmm. And if the color is correct, um, everything else is fine. So I am a value painter, I know that, but I love color. So that's not supposed to happen. You're supposed to decide if you're a color painter or a value painter. Uh uh. I don't have to follow those rules anymore. Um, eight, 12 years of Catholic elementary and high school, I've had enough rules. Mm -hmm. My painting, there are no rules. The only rule that I believe in painting is not to run the viewer's eye out of the painting and to make the painting feel like something. I um, hate to keep quoting people, but I've had so many good teachers in my life. Bill Dyke used to say, if the, um, if the, you can know all the techniques in the world, but if the painting doesn't feel like something, it isn't something. And so I've always wanted a feeling. I've always wanted to know what the message was. And the message might just be as simple as isn't red beautiful. It doesn't have to be a big, serious message, but I like to have a feeling in my painting. And so I look for that. And I think color gives us a feeling. In the morning, um, yellows are much more predominant. So if I take a wash that has more yellow, it's going to feel like a morning painting. If I take a wash, and I'm going to talk about washes in a second. Let me get back to this. Um, the colors that I use most, my red, yellow, and blue, I rely on pretty heavily. And my um, quin... Quinacridone gold or... Orange. Orange, okay. Yeah. So this is Quinn Rose, this is Quinn Orange, and this is the yellow. And then the phthalo blue, you never have to worry about running out of. So I don't even carry tubes when I travel. I simply bring my palette, this is what I bring, and this is more than enough paint for me, literally, to paint for a month on a trip. Wow. Because I have the backups of the three colors I'm going to use most. Um, I do have a smaller palette which has a lot of the same colors again. And this is what I use in my sketchbook. And I love to sketch and I love to work on location. And a couple of hints, I have a piece of plastic, the, don't worry about the lines. And I also have a piece of face cloth that I cut the right size and a whole bunch of uh, paper towels that I cut the right size. Um, I find the more equipment we have, the less painting we get done. So if I can just have a minimum of things with me, I tend to do better. And then I put the plastic in just to keep everything from getting wet in the palette. I also have this little one. Um, this is harder to get my brush into. So I use this more if I'm just using a single brush rather than my big brush and I might be in a sketchbook. Uh, but again, it's always the same colors. I'm pretty familiar with my colors. Um, and I can send you this, John, and we can add it as, an, as at the bottom, because um, I know you're going to be seeing it backwards. Um, every single time I change my palette, in my sketchbook, I actually draw my palette and then put the colors that I have. And um, this is a new one I just sent to Catherine. Hopefully we'll get some new cards made for this. Um, but they're, they're like the last time, they're all stain, transparent, or semi-transparent colors, plus buff. Okay. And titanium buff I love because if I mix that with any of these colors, they act much more like an opaque. And I have 
a double, I have, I, I not only have the transparency, but I have the opaques. And that's what that's doing up there in the corner. I know that's not a stain, and but it's just a way for me sometimes to put a little granulation into something or a little opaqueness into something. It's just a um, what I like. That's all. Um, so these are all, and on this, there's actually three, four, 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 three, three. That comes off your chart as the stain quality. And most people say, oh, I hate stain colors. I hate stain colors. I don't like stain colors. Well, I personally love stain colors. Um, I like stain colors because a lot of times I will literally start a painting on um, white paper and I don't have time to do a wash and wait for it to dry. And I like my washes to dry for 24 hours. I will actually do a multicolor gray that I can you see the change of colors? Perfectly. Because this is a stain color, all of these are equally stained. I can wet this page now and run a wash right across it, and none of this will be disturbed at all. Very interesting. Yeah. It's a grisai method that Rembrandt used. It was what I was taught in oil. Um, to do contrasting tones, to set down your darks and lights, and then to glaze over. Well, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't do that in watercolor. Um, first, I did it in acrylic, and I hate acrylics. I don't like that they dry every time I come back. I do a lot of painting where I work on something, and I go do something else, and I come back in, and I do a little bit more. And so my palette is stained colors. And literally, I wet this entire sheet of paper, and nothing will move. Now, if I go too dark, it will move. I know that I have to be around this 20% oh, value. And so if I'm out on location painting and I don't have a wash, um, so many times what I do when I travel especially, there we go, um, I bring these sheets of paper that all have washes on one side and white paper on the other side. They have had 24 hours taped down to the board to dry. Wow. I try to make everyone different. Um, I try to, to um, just have, so it's white on one side and this on the other. And most of the time when I open my portfolio, I look at the scene or I look at what I wanna work on and one of these are gonna work fine. And now I don't have to wet the page, wait for it to dry. And then, so I can come right in here and start to draw. Awesome. Okay. I know, I told you, type A personality. <laughs> um, my board also has a grid on the back of it. Can you see that grid? Yes. If I take this to my light table, I literally, oh, it's not gonna work here. I literally can see the grid right through it. So I never have to draw a grid on the outside of my paper. Oh, on my, I mean, on my paper. I don't want to spoil the surface of this paper. And so if I'm outside or if I'm in a hotel, I just hold it up in front of the lamp. I can see the grid right through it. And I have a grid system I developed years ago. So if I wanted to do a, 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 this, which I'm going to show you, um, I put the grid on, which is on a plastic sheet of paper. On top of here, I can see the grid through the watercolor paper. I can, in 10 minutes, do a drawing that would take me an hour without the grid. Wow. Time, to me, is of the essence. Then I put this under my sketchbook so that the water, I, I, I use a sketchbook, it's actually a Berman, a Stillman and Burn Alpha series, and this paper's pretty light, but it has a lot of paper in a book, so I only have to take one book on a trip, and I have more than enough paper, but if the water goes through, it can ruin this page, so then I put the plastic underneath, and then because it's a thinner paper, I clip the sides right here, and this will actually dry perfectly flat and um, 
Come on. And I can then have a full sketch on lightweight paper. Oh, that's very nice. And then when I'm ready, and again, like I said, yes, I'm type A, and I don't apologize for it anymore. Put this right on top. Sketch it right on, and boy, drawing with a grid. I mean, literally, an hour is 10 minutes with the grid, or an hour without. Wow. That's just what I do. Nice and I actually have these grids, and I've given them out for years to my students, but I really have them um, where I can email them out to people, and I'm happy to give them free. I mean, I just give them out, and I also. Sorry. If I'm sitting on a plane, if I'm sitting in an airport, if I'm sitting in a hotel room and I really don't want to work on big stuff, then I have this tracing paper pad that is 11 by 14. One of these is a quarter sheet, two of these is a half sheet, four of these is a full sheet. So um, I literally have these grids as well on paper. And Tell me when you can't see what I'm doing. I'll try to make sure you're in the, I'll do this in a minute. Okay, so I had this sketch back here. So this particular one, um, I wasn't in the studio. I actually was sitting in bed and felt like drawing. Um, and so I just took my tracing paper pad. I put, let's see if I can, well, Here's, here's the grid on top of this. Here's the tracing paper. Um, I, you do this section, then you move it up and you do this section, take the two pieces together. And I put this behind my wash and with a light table or a window, you can see the drawing right through and I trace it right onto one of the washes. Very nice. I don't like to erase on my washes. I don't like to erase on my paper. It disturbs the surface. And for me to get those juicy, luscious, clean washes, I need paper that has not been scratched at all. I'm even very careful when I put paper in my portfolio that I take out the whole pack and then lift a page off. When you pull a sheet out, between two sheets, it scratches the paper. And I use Arches 140 pound rough, and everyone thinks their paper is damaged when in fact they've damaged the paper. I'm not saying it's always perfect, but many, many times they actually have abused the paper. Um, and I don't ever get very many sheets that aren't good. And if it is, I turn it on the other side. It's that simple. <laughs> Um, I use 140 pound paper. I use these pieces of plexiglass that used to be in frames that are now scratched. Makes a great printing surface. Um, they're not very heavy. I can bring six of these on a trip in a portfolio and still be able to lift the portfolio. I use a tape to tape it down. And I'm such a fuss budget. I don't know if you can see this on the back. There's actually a line that goes out. And when I tape, I tape exactly on that line. And then I know this is going to fit my mat when I get home exactly. Oh, wow. I don't want to cut different mats. I want to just order a dozen mats the same size and know it's the size I want. It's that simple. Um, so sometimes I start with the wash. Oops. And then I do a drawing on top of the wash. Yes. And then I will do the grisaille or the, the patterning. This patterning I will do on here. So it doesn't matter which one I start first. It depends where I am, what I'm doing, if I'm in a hurry, um, whatever. Uh, 
I spend a great deal of time in the sketchbook. Everything I have ever done, you will see some version of a sketch in the sketchbook. Um, it's here's a whole bunch of backgrounds that I'm going to put maybe behind figures. Um, sometimes I'm doing um, <laughs> that's Mark Mahaffey. Again, there's some backgrounds. I love to do people I know and care about. Um, here's another one. Here's just some abstracts I was playing with. Um, but almost every, oh, here. Um, this is a funny one because I didn't like the fact that they were both facing out. Um, this is actually Ali Abbas and his wife when we were in Pakistan, I think, or or I don't know, somewhere. But when I actually did the painting, I turned Ollie around oh. and faced him towards me and her away. Just why? Because I wanted to. And so in this one, I honestly don't know at this point whether the wash was done first or whether the gray was done first. I, I honestly don't remember. Um, there is actually a wash through all these lights. Um, can you see his shoulder? Yes. Yes. So the wash went directly through. And yep. then when I was done, I just darkened here a little bit. And it gives the illusion that I have white. I have no white in my paintings at all. Here's another one. These are getting ready to be shipped to Pakistan. This is um, two of the... the uh, hosts in Pakistan, and I wanted to send some gifts back. Um, but again, that blue goes right through, that pink goes right through, and then I barely darken behind it to give you the illusion that there's white. And people tell me, no, 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 you left white. <laughs> no, I didn't leave white. It's not what I do. Anyway, um, advice to people, sketch. Sketch constantly. Uh, plan, think, um, don't let a day go by where you don't wet the paper. And it doesn't matter if it's wet the sketchbook paper or a painting paper. But I had a rough year last year with four surgeries. And man, I was working like crazy in my sketchbook because I couldn't paint. But man, when I came back to painting, it was so easy to come back. There's another one. Whenever I change my palettes or I start a trip, especially because I'm a teacher and students are always saying, what color is this? What color is that? I have no idea. It is a mixture of what came off this palette. That's all I can tell you is these are the colors that are in those paintings. Um, I have a little video I will put on, uh, I'll send you. It's just a really short clip of me doing a wash and touching into all the pigments and, and showing how the pigments blend and move. And I think it would be fun for people to see how I do those washes. Fantastic. So, so Linda, okay. how many paintings do you do? Uh, do you do one painting at a time or do you work on several paintings at a time? No, I six at a time. Six at a time. Yeah. And about, and about um, go ahead. That's why I have six of these boards and I have six full sheet boards and six quarter sheet. And w one day I'll come in and I'll do six washes. I'll, you know, I'll tape six pages down, do six washes. And then the next day I'll come in and the drawings take a lot longer than the washes. The washes are literally three minutes a piece. Um, but then I start to think about what do I want? Um, what do I want the figures? What kind of feeling do I want? Um, what colors do I want? And I don't go paint those colors. I pick a wash that's already got those colors. And I sometimes literally put the board on the light table and then try a drawing. I'll do a tracing and put it on top or put it under. And I can see, oh, that's a morning one. Oh, that looks like night. Oh, that's really nice. It looks like dusk, you know. And, and I, there's no plan. There's no, the colors are, are the, the child in me playing. 
the drawing is the draftsman in me. So the left side, right side has to have equal time in my paintings. Very good. And how long does, an, how, how long does a, a painting take in general? Um, I can usually do six paintings in two weeks. Wow. But, but I can't say one is two days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I have an easel you'll see in a minute um, where I set them up as they're in process so that I can keep looking at them. Um, years ago, Robert Wood, I don't know if you remember Robert Wood. You know, of course you do. Sure. Um, he said to me that I tickled my paintings too much and that I shouldn't work on a painting more than 15 minutes before I put it up and work on a different one and look across the room at it. And I shouldn't go back into it until I know exactly what I wanted to do. Not just go in and start tickling a little all over, but to decide, you know what? That needs a dark right there in the corner. It needs to lighten right here. It needs um, whatever it needs and then only go do that. And that really helped me a lot. The other thing that helped me a lot was Rex Brandt, who I was very fortunate to be mentored by um, and spend time at his home and help him with his teaching and his studio. Uh, that was a very special time for me. Um, he, he told me that I illustrated too much, that I had to get away from illu illustrating, which that's who I am. Um, and one day he said, um, he told me not to draw so much. And that's the day he said about that statement, start with what you're st strongest with. And I said, I'm strongest with drawing. From the time I was five years old, I went to the Brooklyn Museum and had drawing lessons. I sat in the museum all summer long. I'm old enough that, that there was a polio uh, epidemic then, and children weren't allowed out to play from noon to two. I don't know if you're old enough to remember that, but that was my childhood. My summers, we were not allowed out because people were afraid you would catch polio. And so my mother would take me to the Brooklyn Museum, which is a big stone building and cool inside, and they had children's drawing classes. And I would sit and draw all the old artifacts. I would draw um, the first lady's gowns. I mean, drawing was, my whole childhood is drawing. Um, I would draw paper dolls and draw the clothes for the paper dolls hour after hour. I'm still drawing paper dolls and dressing them. I mean, I'm truly doing what comes out of my childhood and the pleasure of my childhood. I was very fortunate. My mom was one of 10. I was the first grandchild and everybody loved me. <laughs> wow, wow. So I'm from a big, big family and everybody loved it when I drew. They draw me, draw me. And so I would draw constantly. So why is drawing such a big part of my painting? Because it's a big part of who I am as a person. Very good. So to do those washes, I thought I'd show you some equipment if we can jump off just for a minute. Yeah, of course. Um, I have quite a few, br well, let me do two things. One is my travel. Uh, people always ask me, how can I travel so much and only bring a carry-on? If I ship anything, it's just a portfolio with the boards because I can't carry those on. But man, I'm not letting my brushes or my palette leave my sight. And so I have this children's, literally children's pencil case. And if it doesn't go in here, it doesn't go, period. Everyone comes with all these supplies. Um, the palette folds. This and this is all I need. This is my whole studio with me, okay? And so um, I have a wonderful set of travel brushes. These are a Skoda. I love these brushes. Anyway, um, I have this and this, which are a Da Vinci, um, really nice brush. I have a Cheap Joe one. I have to have a little of everything with me. Um, I have two of these that are pointed that are kind of fun to work with. Are you seeing this okay? Yes, yeah, fine. Oh, okay. Um, I even have a little uh, hockey brush. Um, just a bunch of, of things in here. I keep with me, oh, 
little pieces of Mr. Clean Eraser. And even though I'm using stained colors, I can lift almost back to white paper if I chose to with this. I don't do that very often, but if something happened and I needed to get um, back, I just use this. And I only use them once. It comes as a big sponge. I cut them up into little tiny pieces and I just keep them in here. Um, let's see what else is in here. Just pencils and brushes and oh, a baby one of these. And then this, um, I had a bigger one, but I lost it the last trip, so I had to use the small one. This is, this happens to be a seasickness band, but I use tennis bands. And whenever I'm out or trying to do some work, I have this so that I can just touch. Um, in the video Lauren did, he shook his brush to get rid of his water. Yes. Well, my personality won't let me splatter <laughs> it all over. So I just rub it right on here, and this absorbs all the extra moisture oh. um, easily. And then I throw these in the wash. I actually prefer the wider one, which is the tennis bracelet. Um, and so if I have a brush that's wet and it has too much water, I'll just, I can see it drawing the water out of the brush until it's right where I want. And then I can go in and start to paint with it. We all have our own little, little tricks and, and things that we do. People are always asking me, um, what kind of tape do I use? These are just questions that I get constantly, John, so I'm giving it all to you. This is a duck professional masking tape. And I either use a burnisher or I use my scissors. I literally take and push the tape into the edge because this is rough paper and it's very easy for the wash to run over. And when you burnish uh, or just push it down and make sure it's down, boy, this tape sticks really well. This paper is not stretched, but it's gonna dry fairly flat um, and it's gonna work well for me. I'm trying to think what else is over here that I was supposed to show you. Question, oh, my toilet paper. Um, again, I travel a lot and I want to carry as little as possible. And when I go to Europe, I literally want to try to take one carry-on suitcase. I just don't, the more stuff I have, the less painting I do. A few brushes, a, you know, a palette, I'm better off. Every hotel seems to have an extra roll of TP. I put my finger in the middle, push down the cardboard. I don't know if you can see what I'm, what I'm doing. I pull this out of the center. And the reason I do this is for two reasons. One is I like to have this ready to go, is a lot or a little, anytime I need to dry it off. But I like my boards tilted. I like a slanted board. And what this does for me, it's the perfect height for me to paint on when I get to do a demo and they have a flat table. And it works two ways. It's the tissue that I can grab, but it's also, in order to get this wash, this has to be able to run down. It can't, oh, you're not seeing it, sorry. <laughs> in order to, to get this wash to blend, it needs the gravity for the paint, the, the colors, the, the pigments to blend and to mix and uh, to have that red go into that purple, into that blue. Um, that won't happen on a flat surface. So I need a tilted surface and the toilet paper is my easel, easily. So, okay, what else did I want to tell you? I don't know, do you have any questions? So, are you a fan of synthetic brushes or natural hair? Synthetic. Synthetic, and, and Linda, why synthetic? Um, I can remember when I thought when I could afford a sable brush, I'd be a good, good painter, because all good painters had sable brushes. And then I started teaching and everybody thought I could do what I did because I had a, a sable brush. And so I went to, um, they're not cheap, but they're much less expensive. 
I really like the Escoda Versatile. Um, I don't remember what this is, what, $12, $15 versus $200 Sable. And to be honest, I have gotten so used to these and I love these brushes. So I don't even go back to the Sables anymore. But students, my students at least loved if they could use the same supplies I used. They wanted to use the same palette. They wanted to use the same brush um, because when you're a beginner, you honestly believe it's the material. You believe it's the colors. You believe it's the palette. You believe it's the, the paper. Um, it, yeah, synthetic is absolutely fine for me. Um, this is a synthetic. This is a synthetic. These are Robert Simmons. This one is the Da Vinci. Um, they work perfectly fine for me. Um, when I'm on larger paintings, I even have these great big ones. Um, and these are Escoda Versatile. These were a gift to me. I'm so proud of these. I, when I was in Barcelona, I went out and toured the factory of Escoda and met them. Well, I've met them several times, but that was the first time. And they were very, very generous and gave me several brushes that I have used from that day forward. I, I love their, their flats, um, really like the flats, really like the pointed, really like the, well, I don't know what they call that anymore, sign brush. Um, I know the other thing I use that most artists don't use. Do I have one around? Yes. An architect's ruling pen. Mm. And um, if you fill this with watercolor, I literally can go right across an entire sheet of watercolor with a thin line. Um, let's see. Oh, you can't see my palette. <laughs> All right, only I can lose a. What did I just do with it? Here it is, hiding. So actually, fill it with a brush. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, please see. And that is watercolor, not pen. Wow. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, if I wanted to do a cyclone fence, I would just put some on, let it go dark against light, light against dark, play with that. Um, but this, um, Cheap Joe, you know, it, any of the Amazon, anybody has these, just a little student quality. You can get real expensive ones, but you can also get 499 ones with a plastic handle. But it's amazing. And you, you can actually make the line a little thicker and a little thinner by moving the, the dial. But there are times when I don't want to use a pen. I want to use my watercolor. I want it to, I'm a purist. I can't help it. That's who I am. And to be able to get line, pen like lines with watercolor is nice. i don't know a fun thing to do okay you want to see the studio um would love to see the studio all right so i had closets just stuck with stacked with i could have the door closed and be polite but anyway i'm very fortunate to have this let's let it go catch up okay is, is it blurry for you it's perfect oh okay so this was behind me. I, I was sitting in this chair here, grabbing everything off the table. Um, I have a nice big architect's table. Here's the other palette I was talking about for larger pieces. Um, this, I know you'll laugh at me. Um, this actually has Velcro because it wants to slide off the table. So uh -huh. I just Velcro it and now it stays there and doesn't move. Um, this is the setup for videoing. You can see that the round circle has a 
the camera goes in the middle when I'm doing videos. And then the other one actually holds it when I want to shoot down. Um, I have more storage here. Um, I have more storage here. I have my whole desk unit, my printer, um, my light table. And I was going, don't walk too fast, Linda. Oh yeah, we see the grid. Can you see the grid right through the watercolor paper? Absolutely. It just, I mean, it just was a simple way for me to do it. And in hotels, I just put it up against the window. Um, or I, like I said, I put it on my hip and the lamp next to the bed um, shows it through. And even 300 pound paper will show it through. Um, I then have uh, my computer and uh, another big closet that's full of of frames and stuff. Um, here's some of my abstract watercolors. Most people don't usually see them, but I love to do abstract um, watercolor. Um, there's a painting of mine, and then there's two Zen tangles next to it. Um, there's... Um, Something I've been doing a lot of lately is ink and watercolor. I don't, can you see that okay? Beautiful. And then there's San Diego. Um, just abstracted, just having fun, just enjoying life. And I'm fortunate to have two really nice big windows that give me really good light. Also having a fluorescent up above. And then the circle you're seeing is just the light for when you're doing Zoom calls. And it's kind of nice, you'll see, well, the phone is moved right now, but the phone sits right in the middle of it. And typically I can, I can do that. Um, one of the things that I really like to encourage people to do, this room is all my art. Um, everything in here uh, up above are my photographs, over here are my digital collages. Um, but the rest of the house um, has other people's work. And I really, there's a few, oops, a few of mine here. But I think artists should surround themselves with other people's work. There's a Rex Brandt, there's a Polly Hammett, there's a Kathleen Conover, another Rex Brandt. Um, I really like to have art around me, other people's uh, art around me. And so my entire house is full of, um, I think, really beautiful. A, a Rex Brandt and a Don Andrews, um, a Barbara Nietzsche's, a Robert E. Wood, a uh, Barbara Nietzsche's, uh, Robert E. Wood, Carol Barnes. Um, and so I, I really think people, or at least I get very inspired seeing other people's art. There's a Mark Mahaffey over in the corner and a Elaine Birnbaum, can't see that too well, over the fireplace. Um, as I come over here, there's another Mark Mahaffey and some Jane Woods. Um, as I come around, um, the light is bad, unfortunately. And Elaine Harvey, Frank Eber, you did a talk with him yeah. the other day. Yes. Um, there's a couple of hand hand pulled uh, wood cut wood block cut prints by Rex Brandt that was given to me as a gift. Um, the other place I do a lot of my work. Let me come over here. I have this really nice big table outside. Um, that allows me to bring my palette and my paper out and work out here and be in the garden with the flowers and the jacuzzi and um, It's a small backyard, but it's really uh, a place to come out and just really relax and enjoy Yes, very nice Okay, let me go back in um, John, what other questions do you have for me? I think that was, I think you answered just about everything. Um, you gave a lot of tips and a lot of techniques. Um, I was with Linda and Catherine in Shenzhen, China, 
And the one thing that uh, to this day I still remember is um, Linda giving lessons on how to how to do composition with a camera. I mean, <laughs> it is night and day between what I was and Catherine was doing with a camera versus the tips you gave us. It 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 allowed a whole different way of seeing the scene. So I like when you talk about that. It really is about composition and and what you feel and how you feel about the place that you're in and how you can convey that to others. I think that's just yeah. excellent. Well, the last thing I guess I wanna say is the so many people talk about how fast can you do a watercolor, the fastest brush in the West, the fastest brush. Um, I think that's perfect for them, but I don't think every artist uh, needs to think in speed. I think taking your time and enjoying what you're doing, thinking about it, I think that's pretty important. Um, so just because the TV or the internet uh, promotes how fast can you do a painting, I don't think artists should get hung up on that one. Take as long as you need, as long as you want. Um, just enjoy yourself. That's fantastic. So today we were in the studio with Linda Dahl. Linda, thank you so very much. Wish you health and happiness for you and your family and look forward to seeing you in the, I think it's going to be next year, get to see you in person. Okay. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Bye -bye.